So we're looking at our introduction of quadratic functions. So anytime we see a quadratic function, we'll typically look at it in standard form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c, or what we'll call vertex form, which is a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. Different that they have different ways that we're going to get the important information to get them to a graph, and we'll kind of get to that later, but right now it's just kind of an introduction, basic form, um, some changes that occur within the, the uh, quadratic functions. So anytime we have a quadratic function, it'll graph a parabola, which is what we have drawn here. Important parts or important terms that we have is the vertex, that is usually most important. That's kind of like our, our starting point for any parabola that we draw. Now the line of symmetry, or the axis of symmetry, is a vertical line that goes through the vertex. And from that, you get a mirrored image of the parabola. So a point that is a certain distance away from the line of symmetry will be reflected over to the other side. So we could really just graph half of it and then do a reflection. And that will help us in the process that we're doing. Uh, other things that come up is we may have y-intercepts, those may apply, and then when it hits the x-axis, we call that the x-intercept or a solution, which is something we look at later as well. So just kind of some different changes that occur. For vertex form, we have hk, so let's just call the vertex right now, refer to it as the letters hk. So if a is greater than zero, and that's the lead term in front, the parabola is going to open up. So that's first off. Now, if that occurs, we also know that the domain, or all of the x values that work within the parabola, or the quadratic function, will be all real numbers. The range, which is the y values that exist within the function, will not be all real numbers, because it depends on what values we have. If I'm looking at this one here, the y values underneath the vertex don't work for it. So the range is going to be the y values that are greater than the k value that we have, with k being the y value of the vertex, so anything that's above this point. Now, if we go to a less than zero, that means it's opening down. In this case, this would be a maximum, and up in this one, I forgot to mention that, that is a minimum. Our domain is going to be all real numbers again, Little secret here, anytime we have a quadratic function, domain is always all real numbers as long as it opens up and op or opens down, opens left or right, that, that's later on, later math class, but for now, all real numbers are what we, what we are dealing with. The range is going to be, since it's opening down, it's going to be y values less than k. So k is the y value in the vertex, anything that's going to be underneath that. So that's kind of some, a lot of terms that we have to it, but let's just kind of go through the basic sketch. Vertex, direction it opens, and we'll kind of pick up the width of it as we go. So I have y equals x squared. I just took a t-chart of some values I'm gonna pick from it. So let's start with zero. If I plugged in zero for x, zero squared is zero. If I plugged in a one, I get one squared is one, and two squared is four. So if I went and plotted those points, it would look like this. And this is half of our parabola. It is opening up, and it's actually getting steeper as it goes, because if I went to three, it would be nine. And these are just the perfect squares. Now earlier, I said that it's the mirror image of it. It's a reflection. So negative one squared is also positive one. Negative two squared is four. So if we graph it to the other side, this these units are the same amount, goes over two, goes over two for the values. So we have our parabola there. What happens if we make it a negative x squared? Well, zero is just zero, but one negative one squared, we get a positive one by squaring it, so that comes out to be a negative one. Negative, or if I plug in a two into negative x squared, we get negative four. So if we look here, we would have this as the portion of our parabola, opening down, plugging in or substituting in the negative values. Negative one squared is positive one, 
with a negative is negative one, and this is negative four. Again, these are the matching values, negative one, negative one, negative four, negative four. It will follow this for a parabola. If I'm getting it where suddenly there's a point up here, it's going in the curve and then it jumps and then it comes back down. That's not usually what we're looking for. It's going to have that symmetry to it, which is nice about parabolas. We don't need all these points that follow together. The, the, that symmetry is going to work to help us. So x squared and negative x squared, we can kind of see the value out in front, which we would consider the a value. If it's positive, it opens up. If it's negative, it opens down, similar to what we said right here. All right. Now, let's look at 2x squared and negative 1 half x squared. So we at 2x squared, 0 gives me 0 squared times 2 is 0. That's the same. 1 gives me 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. Now compared to the values we had up here, we went 0, 1, 4. Now we went 0, 2, 8. We're actually doubling them. That's just why the 2 is there. And so our points go a lot steeper in that parabola. So the difference between these two, we can see it's already getting steeper as it goes up. When we look at the negative values we're going to plug in, that's uh, negative 1 gives us a positive 1 times 2 is 2. And then negative 2 would also give us an 8. We have a steeper more narrow parabola. Well, let's look at negative one-half x squared. So zero in here goes zero. But we put in a one. One squared is one. Times a negative one-half gives us negative one-half. Two squared is four. Times a negative one-half is negative two. So we go over one, down a half over 2, down 2. And this starts off a little more narrow, or wider we should say, flatter we could look at, than the one above it, which was just negative x squared. So the 1 half pushes the values closer together, starts out wider. Uh, negative 1 is going to become negative 1 half, and negative 2 is going to become negative 2. We can start to prepare. So clearly I look at these two. A two compared to a one half, the larger the value, the more narrow the parabola becomes. The closer it is to zero, the wider it becomes. And that seems a little bit counterintuitive, but what's happening here is when we multiply by this number, it stretches the parabola vertically. And by stretching it vertically, it makes it more narrow. That's compared to this original one which we would have looked like using the same points as earlier. I missed it on this side. Hopefully you notice that. So the dotted line is just x squared, whereas the solid line is 2x squared. Conversely, we come over here. If I plotted the points I did before for just negative x squared, we see now Compared to the dotted line, it's a lot wider graph. So the larger the a value in front, the more narrow. The smaller or closer to zero, the wider the graph. Let's look at some more. So 1 half x squared plus 2. So I'm going to do the same values again. Put in a 0. This all becomes 0 plus 2 is 2. Negative, uh, put in a 1, 1 squared is 1, times 1 half is 1 half, times 2 is 2.5, or 2 and a half. If I put in a 2, 2 squared is 4, half of that is 2, plus another 2 is 4. Let's look what we got here. So we went to 0, 2. Then over one up two and a half, over two up four. Let's put negative one in, and that it becomes a positive one times a one half is one half times two is two point five. Notice it's the same on either side of the vertex, which means negative two is going to be four.
And so there is our parabola. Now what else changed here is that 2 on the end, that plus 2, actually took a vertical shift. So now the vertex is at the coordinate 0, 2. So this value that we add on to the end is actually going to shift it up or down for where we start with the vertex. So what if we did negative 2x squared minus 4? So let's put the same values in. So plug in a 0, I get 0 minus 4. If I put in a 1, 1 and negative 2 becomes negative 2, and negative 4 becomes negative 6. Put in a 2, we get 4 and negative 2 is negative 8, and another negative 4 is negative 12. It has the symmetry, so negative 1 will also give us negative 6, negative 2 will also give us negative 12. So let's see if we have the space here. So we're going 0, negative 4, then we're going 1, negative 6, and then 12. So this gets steeper as it goes, so our sketch of us puts us there. Vertex was at the point 0, negative 4. So we're not shifting it left or right yet, which is fine, but the negative force caused it to move down for a lot, as a y-intercept and start at that value. Okay, so x squared minus 3. So what we've seen so far, we can start to predict to what this is going to look like. So x squared, no number in front, it'll kind of be our standard form of our width of the parabola. The negative 3 should move it down 3. So we put in a 0, x squared minus 3, we get negative 3, because it's 0 minus 3. We put in 1, substitute for 1, we get 1 squared is 1, minus 3 is negative 2. For 2, we get 2 squared minus 3, which gives us a positive 1, that's 4 minus 3. So we plot those points, and it looks like this. So we get 0, negative 3 to 1, negative 2, to, to 2, 1. Other side of it, negative 1 squared is positive 1, minus a negative 3 is negative 2, and negative 2 squared is positive 4, minus 1 is 1. So here's our points on that side, and our other parabola. So it did shift down, and it did open up. Next we have 3x squared. So I'm not adding anything onto the end, so it should start at our origin there. Uh, the 3 should make it more narrow, and it should open up because it's positive. So let's see what we got. 3x squared, we put 0 in, 3 times 0 is 0. 1 squared is 1 times 3 gives us 3. 2 squared is 4 times 3 gives us 12. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 3 is 3, and then negative 2 also gives us 12. So we go 0, 0, and then we went 1, 3, and 2, 12 is actually off my grid. So it just gets very steep, and we'll draw it that way. Really, if you have the vertex and a point on either side, it's kind of enough of a basic sketch. If we need more detail, we'll plug in points or we'll um, use a graphing, graphing program to help us. But that's a good start for us to get to. 4x squared minus 5. Negative 5 tells me it's probably going shifting down 5 to start down here. The 4 on the x squared is indicating that it's likely opening up and it's going to be more narrow of a graph. So in this one, let's just use uh, 0, negative 1, positive 1, and see if that's enough to give us the information. So we put 0 in for x squared. This becomes 0, and we have negative 5. We put in a 1, 1 squared is 1, times 4 is 4, minus 5 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, that can becomes 4, minus 5 is negative 1. So we have those points. So with the vertex and these points, we see a pretty steep graph opening up 
going through those values. If we put 2 in there, we'd have 2 squared is 4 times 4 is 16 minus 5 is 11. So if we needed to, we could then count up 11 and find that coordinate. But this is a good idea. It's really vertex, direction, and width is where we need to start for our parabolas. Last one is 2x squared minus 1. Minus 1 means it's going to be shifted down 1. The 2 on the x squared tells us it's opening up and it's going to be more narrow than the original function. So we got 0, negative 1, negative 2, 1 and 2. Put in a 0, that's 0 minus 1, it's negative 1. If we put in a 1, 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2, minus 2 is 1. Negative 1 would give us the same thing. 2, 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8, minus 1 is 7, and then negative 2 would be the same. So we have coordinates at negative 1, 1, and 1, 1, as well as 2, 7, and negative 2, 7. And sketching our parabola. There we go.